What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video on Bicycle Cars TV. Today we are up in Walsall, so I'm here to pick up this Kia Picanto that you see behind me. Let me give you a walk around here, then we're gonna do the usual, set the cameras up, go for a drive, and see how this cheap Kia is doing. It's super low mileage, but at the end of the day, we don't know what we're buying to some extent. So let's get the camera set up, let's show you the car, and go for a drive. Right, let's give you a quick exterior walk off the car. I'm gonna do it in wide angle because it is a bit tight over there, but you'll get an idea how the car is looking at the moment. So it's a grade three car, meaning it's in not terrible condition, but looking at the driver's side, to be honest with you, it looks in pretty good shape. I'm yet to look through the paperwork or, well, the logbook, because we don't actually have any service history on this car, but it's not too bad. Even over here around the back as well. What are we thinking? Pretty good condition in consideration being a 55 plate. You've got a couple of marks over here, but nothing major at all. You'd expect this on something of this age. It is low mileage is what I will say. 39,000 I think it is, but we'll double check that once we get in the car. Going down the passenger side, so we've got a little scratch over here. Again, well, will that tea cut out? This might tea cut out, but again, nothing out of the ordinary on something like this, especially with the value and the age, but the rest of the side is looking pretty, pretty clean. Well, we've got another glamour sticker over here, so it's matching on both sides. Probably we'll get those taken off, but let's see. Now, looking at the front of the car, how are we looking on the bumpers? So, a little bit of paint gone over here, so probably can put a bit of touch up on that if we have any silver paint at home. If not, see if I can pick something up, because that's very, very easy just to touch up being on the bumper. Oh, same over here as well. So, we've got the same on this side as well, so I think it might be worth touching that up, touching that up, and the same one on the other side. But exterior-wise, I think I can agree, grade three car, happy with how things are looking. Let's check the inside. So going into the interior and wow, that is looking super, super clean. Considering this car has yet to be cleaned, don't think it's actually gonna need a valet to be honest. It'll just need a good hoovering in and out, but even down this side, pretty good. Condition wise, seats, not much wear and tear. Things are looking nice on the bolsters. Really happy with our first impressions. That is looking nice. I guess you would expect good condition because it is a low mileage car, but nice to see it has been looked after. Let's check the rears out. Yeah, the rears are looking very, very nice. I would love to show you that the car needs a full valet and a big transformation, but in all honesty, for a cheap little Kia Picanto, this is looking very, very tidy. Right, let's get this thing started. So key in, ignition on. Oh, I think. Yeah, we've got a flat battery. Okay, two seconds. Okay, so let's try that again. I've got it connected up, ignition on. Fuel is a bit low, so let's give it a go. Okay, so sounding good so far. What lights are still on? So we've got handbrake, doors are open, seat belt, which I'm sat on, and fuel light. Cooling light should go away once the car warms up. So we are looking pretty good so far. So. Let's get this disconnected, take it for a first drive, get some fuel in and see how we're doing on the Kia Picanto. Right, so the Kia is now started. I'm gonna let it run for a bit, charge the battery up and just make sure it's okay when it's running to temperature because can't turn the car on and off just yet because the battery may die. So wanna make sure that we're okay on that front. But once it's up to temp, we'll get driving, chuck some fuel in and we're gonna see how this car is driving from the auction. So I'll see you in a second. Thank you, mate. Yeah, quite those. Yeah, it's not bad. <laughs> Nearly had a heart attack when it didn't start. <laughs> Have you seen what it says on the side? Glamour. Glamour. <laughs> Take care, mate. <laughs> See you later. Right, so how are we looking just pulling out of VCA? Well, clutch is good in terms of the biting point, but it is a bit rigidy, shall I say. So I'm being very cautious not to stall the car. Okay. Third gear, no unwanted noises from the engine, no knocks or creaks from the suspension. Seems to be driving well. Now I had a little flick through the logbook because that's the only thing I've got with this car along with two keys. And the slight concern was 
the lady who's had this has only owned it since April last year. Now, me, I buy cars, I sell cars, even personal ones. I don't always keep them for a long time. So it's not end of the world, these things, but it sometimes can be a red flag. If someone's had a car that's good, why would they sell it in such a short space of time? Because generally people keep cars for quite a few years, to be honest. So who knows? But at this moment in time, the car is driving very, very nice. It's done 39,119 miles, so it's super low miles. Even when I was leaving the auction, the guy said it sounds very, very quiet as well. So it sounds like it's gonna be a good little car, but until we do a little bit more driving, we're not gonna know. So let's start with getting some fuel in this car because last thing I wanna do is run out and have a dead battery. Oh, that's the wipers, not the indicators. The indicators are on the opposite side for these cars, so something you gotta get used to. But let me just quickly park up, get some fuel in this car, and then we'll be on our way. Right, fueled up, half tank, enough to get me back to the office and then some for any future test drive. So, let's get going. I'm starting to like this car already, even though I am probably a bit tall for this car and it's probably not designed for someone of my height, but I'm enjoying driving it. I do really like this car. For a small car and a big guy like me, you would think I don't enjoy this car, but it's driving so nice. Everything feels tight and you can just tell this is a low mileage car, which is a good thing. So what's the plan of action on this car? In all honesty, there isn't a lot that needs doing to this car. It's a lot better than expected. You know, if things were wrong, yes, it would make a longer video, but it's a positive that I don't need to do a lot. So what are those things that I need to address? The first thing is getting the car service. So there is no record of service history on this car at all. I'm sure it's been serviced. It's 39,000 miles, it's a 55 road. I'm sure this car has been serviced at some point in this life, but unfortunately, we don't have any records off that. This does happen when people are selling cars to, you know, Wee Bonnie car or vendors because you just need your logbook and your car keys and you can sell a car. So if someone's misplaced something, oh, that van is smoking. That van is very, very smoky. But if you've misplaced things, you know, and it's a cheap car, especially at this price point, I don't think it's gonna make a drastic difference to your valuation at Wee Bonnie car. So, you know, we just have to assume that this car hasn't got any service history because if there's no record of it, there's no record of it. So that's the first thing which I'm gonna get done is getting it dropped off to get a service. Now, in terms of the MOT, the car's got about six months on there already. So I don't think I'm gonna get an MOT done. Six months is generally my cutoff point. So I could look to get it done by the same time. Do I need to? Not really. That's probably something which I'm not gonna do. Yes, when the car goes there for a service anyway, of course, they're gonna check everything over to make sure it's safe. And if anything does need doing, of course, they're gonna rectify the car and make sure it's roadworthy. And then the only other thing which I'm gonna have to get done is getting the car, you know, ready for advertising in the sense of getting it clean. So it doesn't need a deep clean. The seats look fantastic. And even the carpet underneath, it's in pretty good condition. I probably will look to get a light valet done. I don't think the seats are gonna need a deep clean. It just needs a good old Hoover. Some of the carpets might need a bit of a scrub or a bit of wet vac to just make that look a lot newer, but it smells fresh in here. The car's been looked after, which is a nice thing. So the reality is all this car needs is a service and getting it cleaned. Potentially, we may need a battery, but we're gonna find out once we get the car back because if the car starts once we've gone back, we'll know that the alternator is charging the battery, but tomorrow morning, I'll go to start the car. And if it isn't starting, the battery's weak and gonna be replaced. So those are the three things which are gonna to need to get done to get this car ready for sale. But it's nice, it's good for me, you know, buying a cheap car like this. It didn't cost a lot of money. The hammer price off this was 600 pounds plus a bit of fees. I'll pop up on the screen to let you know how much this car did cost with all the fees, etc. But 600 pound hammer price, 39,000 miles on a 55 reg, one liter Kia Picanto, popular car. It's a small car, small engine. These cars are always gonna be in demand. So for me, I'm happy with this purchase. Don't have to spend a lot of money in terms of preparation. And we should make a nice profit on this car because retail wise, there are a few Picantos across the board priced, you know, some are cheap, some are expensive. But for me, I think this is a car which is gonna be maybe just below the two grand mark or around that two grand figure. Low mileage, serviced, pretty good condition overall as well. So I don't see why this car won't sell around that price mark. Now, this isn't always the case. You need to make sure you do your homework because as much as you can make money on these types of cars, 
you can equally lose money or do all this work and break even. So it's really important when you're doing your buying to make sure you've got enough margin in there to cover things if things go wrong. Because if this was a bad car, if it needed a clutch, if it needed engine work or gearbox or whatever it may be, and you had to spend five, 600 quid, then the reality is there wouldn't be much profit in the car. So it's just something you need to think about, guys. But on that note, guys, I've got about another 110 miles for me to get home. So fingers crossed, we make it back. But just wanted to make a quick video to show you the collection of this Picanto, the first impressions, what to expect when you're buying this from BCA and what I'm gonna to do to get this car ready for sale. I won't do a part two to show you any transformation because there isn't much to see on this car. Hopefully you get an idea of the costings, the margins, and the type of cars you can buy from the auction. So on that note, guys, thank you so much again for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'm gonna see you on the next one. Take care, guys.